What's going on, wrestling fans? This is I, Fall, and welcome to Tank Kong right here on Wrestling is Co. On today's edition, I'm talking to someone that I have interviewed, I think, eight times now. It's Ari. Andrew, how are you doing today? I am doing fabulous. How about yourself? I'm doing great. We are headed toward WrestleMania season, and so much is happening, and so much is happening with you as well. But what is next for you in the music business? Yes, well, it's actually crazy because I didn't even think about this too, which we'll, we'll get into, which is exciting with my company, PTW. But yes, so Quiggy has been needing to be released for a while now. It's been in like the voltage and was like the time he was going to be at the Rumble and it just timing fell off. It wasn't the things were the video wasn't together. Fast forward. Um, it's just something I feel like I've always have stuck to. Um, I released the song on the day of the pay-per-view for, um, no, no, sorry. I really like the song. You know, the day of the live event for PTW, October 12th, and then gave people the opportunity to watch the music video if you purchased the pay-per-view. Um, then fast forward, life was just lifing for, for life, you know, shit be happening. And uh, it got pushed back again. And I was like, okay, you know what? I waited this goddamn long. People probably don't even give a fuck. We're like, oh, bye, have a good day. I was like, well, you know what? With, uh, um, with Women's Month coming up in March, I was like, well, what better way to do it on March 8th, where the whole campaign is like, as I partnered with IME, IMELife.com, and they're a global marketing agency that makes you um, want to just embrace being who you are. Like, so the whole slogan for them is I Me Everything. So we partnered together, and the queen is just about, no matter how you represent, whether, you know, that um age whatever the case may be because you know there's so many different pronouns so many you don't want to offend anybody but however you view yourself it's just about um embracing the skin you're in we you know we live in a society where social media is a fucking lie um everyone's just putting their highlight reel and not really showing their true self and it's saying no hey no one can do you like you it's like the greatest time when um jim carrey is like oh why do you get depressed you're getting depressed because you're pretty much like done being that avatar you know it's like it's like when you finally embrace being who the fuck you are, I feel like you, like, people, A, people feel like respect you, but it makes you more vulnerable on a human being. So, with that being said, because that was a very long, um, yeah, so I'm going to release Queen March 8th, yeah, and just celebrate, um, because I am a woman, and a black woman, and, you know, all these things that come with that, that's sassy, and the whole nine, and I just kind of embrace being who I am, so it's about just loving the skin that you're in. Because at the end of the day, um, you are your only superpower. I mean, you are, yeah, you are your only superpower. There we go. Man, I, I, March 8th coming up again. It, it, so much is happening in the world for you. And I'm so pumped for March 8th. But you brought it up. You brought it up. So March 8th, we have your music video. But also, am I correct? We're going to get into WrestleMania week. Is there an event coming up involving you and Pound Town Wrestling? Yes. The mark in the town, there's motherfuckers. I'm just kidding. Sorry, I had to get in there with some songs it's too. Okay. Singing, I, I felt I had to jump in. People are going to love this or hate this. I love it. So April 3rd, we're doing a, another show. Um, TBD, if it's going to be live, I feel like the show, the first show went so well that I'm like, oh, we'll go live and have all the fuck-ups of the world. Um, but yeah, we're going to be out do it like it's pretty much the lead into wrestlemania so we're like you know what so when so april april 3rd is wednesday the week the week of wrestlemania just to clarify everyone does no days and times those the wednesday weekend leading into yeah yes you're like the first thing that kicks off the week exactly so wednesday we figured that'd be perfect most people aren't going into um wrestlemania weekend in philly um thursday friday so i was like okay why not have the show wednesday and be a part of be a part of the whole the whole vibe. So I'm super excited. Um, yeah, and stay tuned for who's going to be on the card. Um, will I be wrestling again? And maybe I might be doing a false count anywhere match. I don't know. Maybe casket match. I don't know. Like you know, just stay tuned. A casket <laughs> match. People are going to be blown away for this next show. Let me just put it out. Okay. Now, so I'm just wait for this. It's like. People are so obsessed with wrestling. Any of this, it's going to be like, that's going to just outshine me when you talk about the music video for Marge 8th. 
I cannot wait. I, I, if there's a true reality where you can be in a casket match, because I will be in Philadelphia on Wednesday, no, April third. No, this is in West Hollywood. West Hollywood. Oh my God! I gotta get. I gotta fly out there, then fly out to Philly because I need to see both of these events because so much is happening that week. Man, what a kickoff! What a crazy kickoff! Oh my God, you got so much going on. Yeah, I like you. And as much as I did, there's a love of the relationship with, you know, the wrestling world. It's like, you, you just keep sleeping on my ass. But it's like, little do you know what I just have up my sleeve, you know? It's so the I'm like, it's, and it's not even that I care, but it's like, you know, I'm like, you're going to finally put some respect on me. I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't think there's hate out there because any time that you put something out on social media, anywhere, it doesn't matter where it is, it blows up. So whatever hate you're seeing or reading, it's because, for instance, I don't. I go to a lot of hotels. I don't sit around and write bad reviews all day. Some people are assholes and just do that. It's, yeah. it's very rare do I sit down and tell the hotel, what a great job you did, and I, and I sit there. I don't do that. I, if anything, anyone's going to write a bad comment versus a good comment. So if you're feeling hate, I don't see it through my eyes because anytime you put anything out on Twitter, on Instagram, it doesn't matter where it is. Look at the numbers. It blows up. So I, I want to say it right now. Stop putting yourself down. All right? No, it's, no, it's, I'm not even bringing it because if you ain't got haters, you're not popping. Hey, do you think about the most successful people are getting hated on 24-7 because deep down inside, people who are writing crazy stuff is like, damn, I wish that was me. Everyone loves an underdog until the underdog prevails. Because when you're an underdog, everyone is rooting for you. Then all of a sudden, when you're pop the nut, it's, well, it's fuckers getting a push. Like, you, you, you see it in wrestling. Like, people are like, I wanted this crazy thing to push. And finally, they get a push. They're like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yep. That is a common thread. That is a common thread in the wrestling world. Um, You know, it's funny is we were talking about WrestleMania and The Rock, but in that press conference, he was dropping F-bombs. And I'm shocked because, you know, we think of The Rock. You don't think of someone who's dropping F-bombs on, on a press conference. But, hey, you know, it's on Peacock, so they wanted to do it. But... Some other wrestling news that recently happened. I was at the Royal Rumble. And I'm sitting there enjoying myself. And suddenly it's, here comes number two in the Women's Rumble. It is your buddy. It's Naomi. Back in the WWE's arms. How did that make you feel? Because I'll be honest, that crowd, like 50,000 people were going crazy. The music, the, the lasers, the smoke. People were dancing. I was dancing. I was like, sit down. And I said, no, I'm not going to sit down. Um, you know what? I'm really proud of her because, again, it's one of these that I, I'm praying. Because, again, you never know. I'm praying that it's like she went out there, created, was like, okay, I'm going to leave. You know, went and got the, the title. And then it's like, okay, now I got to finally get what I always wanted. And, again, you've noticed a lot of times um, people who leave and go create a name for themselves and come. It's like, it's almost like, it's almost very interesting. It's almost like... It's like when you're there, you're like, oh, we don't really care. But then when you leave and you're killing, they're like, wait, hold on. We want to have that. We want to say it's because of us who did it. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, in a way, you cut, like, look at Chelsea, too. You know, like, got fired, went off, did her thing, and then, you know, became a tag team champ. But, like, you know, you she's now, I feel like, the most we've seen of her. I mean, I know she was always getting injured, but it's like, again, this, enough, you know, a person who got fired. I mean, Naomi didn't get fired, but, you know, it's just like, again, it's always beautiful to go see people go, like, settle and then actually be a force to reckon with when they come back. Yeah. It was so good to see her back. It was so good to see her. Have you talked to her about her experience? Have you spoken to her? Um, So I texted her. I just, I didn't know that that was overwhelming. So I even waited a few days before I reached out to her. Um, It was just like, you know. Hey, boo, I just want to say I'm, you know, I'm always so proud. We haven't, we didn't go, we haven't gone into detail, but it was just more of like, I'm so fucking proud of you. You know what I mean? And it was just like, she was like, thank you for always supporting me. So it's just like, you know, our cute little sister moment that we had, um, a, a call is probably due, but you know, when you're in that world, it's like, you don't even have time to scratch your ass. Like, you know, she just doesn't, doesn't have time for the John, but I don't barely have time to go on a date, let alone. So it's like trying to get those phone calls in. It's like. You know, it's more of like, let's send voice emails, let's do the text until there's like a little moment of like a, whoo, 
I don't know if she had to probably even have that moment to just like breathe, take it all in and just have, have time for herself. That was like that. That was a lot. Yeah, I yeah, that was a it was a huge moment because also from TNA, Jordan Grace was in Red Royal Rumble, too. And I, that, I got the interviewer last week or a week before about that. It was right after the Rumble. And TNA was so gracious, uh, Grace was giving me Jordan Grace. And wow, what an uh, amazing moment for her as well. Again, 50,000 people going crazy seeing her name pop up. And again, what do you think about that? Because again, you had a few stints here and there in you know, every organization, it feels like. So Jordan Grace seeing uh, a contracted TNA wrestler show up in a Royal Rumble. I know Mickey James did that, but she technically wasn't a contracted TNA. She was a freelancer for TNA. So this is the first ever, like, real contract coming over. Like, what what do you think about that? I was actually just going to touch on that. I think that that's awesome because I know a lot of times with companies, I mean, I, if you know, you see it in the independent, it's like, oh, you know, it's like everyone's like, yeah. But I'm like, I feel like there's still a different crowd that watch wrestling. You know, you have a particular uh, AEW crowd, a particular TNA crowd, the indie crowd. So I feel like when you're able to cross over, it's just giving both companies promotion. And I think that that's awesome because it's like, why does it have to be, okay, and this company's over here and this company's over here? Like, I guess too, as a, a business marketing major and a CEO of my own company, it's like, I want to I wanna do what's best for the business. And I can't, it's like, I think a lot of times we let our ego like get in the way of stuff of being like, you know, I have to be the number one or this. It's like, hey, everyone has their own lane and there's nothing wrong with, you know, coming together for also the greater good of the talent. That's also helping the talent. And the more popular the talent is, the builder just built the company. It's just, it's, it's, I feel like it's very simple. And sometimes I'm like, I don't understand why certain people didn't don't, or don't do certain things. It's like, it's not. Right. I look at it as like, um, it's Pepsi and Coke. Like, Pepsi and Coke aren't going to work together to do some sort of campaign of, like, oh, we should do. Like, years ago, they had Pepsi versus Coke challenge. And that was really like, hey, we're friends, but we're really not friends. Like, th- yeah. th- this TNA moment was like, oh, my God, they're letting a, a TNA wrestler come on to their show. And now they're both kind of friends about the situation. It's not, hey, I'm going to get one on over you. It wasn't like she came in and got thrown on in five seconds. She came in and and beat some people up for a long time. So it, it was and, and even at the press conference, the Rumble press conference, Triple H and Bailey put Jordan Grace over and TNA. So it's like, I think I think we could see more of this. Obviously, other companies not going to work together for because of you mentioned of uh, egos. Yeah, uh, those are, some companies are not going to work together for many different reasons, and egos is most likely the number one in money. Yeah, definitely money will always be involved. I don't know. I just look at it like it's if you can learn how to, everything is marketing. It's like a lot of even like things that you see go on. I mean, I even feel like um, like certain rappers and stuff like things are just I mean, people believe the Internet so much. I'm like, how do you not know that this is like a PR stunt? And they have everybody now in a frenzy. It's like being smart and calculated. It's like. Like you said, the Pepsi and Coke, that's actually pretty dope. Because it's like, oh, which one's better? Now people who were Pepsi lovers are like, no, maybe let me go try to Coca-Cola. You know? People were Coca-Cola. Like, maybe let me go try Pepsi, you know? It just, and also, too, what's popular, people will go eat something, drink something, go watch something, even if it's shit, just because it's popular. Because now people don't want to put it over. So it's kind of like if you get that as, like, a mind frame, it's like, yeah, like, it can also be a little calculated, a little be like, I really don't stop with you like that, but, you know, lots to make some money off of you. And, uh, yeah. like, it's it's not personal. It's just business. We ain't going to be best friends, but I can make this for my business. Yep, I agree. I hear you. You know, I think CM Punk said it best. She's not here to make uh, friends. She's here to make money. And so a lot of people in the wrestling business are that. Hey, we can shake hands and we can have a great time and we can do something together. But in reality, sometimes people aren't going to be friends. Some people are not going to be uh, acquaintances. So we'll have to see what happens next. So like Naomi came home to the WWE. Well, yeah. recently on AEW Dynamite, they set up a scenario where they're going to go to Boston, where I'm from, on March 13th. And, and Boston wasn't spelt 
B-O-S-T-O-N. It was spelt B-O-S-S-T-O-N. Boss. Hello, Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet. So it seems that Sasha Banks, Mercedes, has signed with AEW, and she's going to debut in Boston on March 13th. And me and you had a very passionate conversation about two years ago, maybe, about uh, Naomi and Sasha Banks, both at the time leaving the WWE. Naomi's back. Sasha obviously still has feelings uh, that she's not happy about whatever happened, and no one knows what happened, so we can't speculate here. But now she's going to AEW. Were, were you kind of shocked by this that Naomi can can come back, but Sasha is not interested coming back? She wants to. We, we don't even know. We don't even know if she wants to come back. That she's going to AEW. I don't know what the backstage scene is. Like I don't know the story. You know, it's really hard. It's actually really hard to comment on that because it's like, who knows? I mean, unless something leaks on the dirt sheet, and even then, again, you can't believe that. That's the fucking internet. Half the time, the internet's fucking false. Everyone will believe it. If it's on the, if it's on the internet, it's true, right? It's of course it's one thousand. Of course, of course. Um, but or if it, it comes out of her mouth, I feel like that's a that's too hard of a speculation to say. Like, you know, I why right? So um, yeah, I agree. Seems like what you know, triggered it. It's like I'm gonna go over here and. Maybe get the things that I've been asking for, or want, or truly desire, or I want to try. Maybe give it. I want to try something new. Who knows? I mean, I don't want to see her make speculations because also, to you know, people will twist. But yeah, I, I mean, again, yeah, yeah, it's mine to to boop. Um, yes, but I agree with you that we don't know this true story. The only thing that I've ever seen from Sasha Banks or Mercedes is she was at a, like a comic con and someone walked up to the camera. It was like, um, you left the WWE, and then he threw out like a reason, and she she was very angry about this person throwing out a just a random blank statement of why she left, and she flat out was like, you don't know, nobody knows, I've never said it, so how do you how do you know? And it's true, exactly. nobody knows, nobody knows. All we could all do is go. Hmm, I wonder why she chose AEW versus WWE. We'll never know unless Sasha Banks opens up her mouth and says. This is why I left, or this is why I didn't come back. So, you know, we'll have to see what is that. Right. I feel like even any, I feel like it, especially with wrestling, I'm like, I feel like I have to literally be like this when I'm commenting on stuff. Because I, if you say anything, it just, it also gets twisted. So guys, you better not twist anything that I think, I didn't say anything that I would say. Okay. You didn't, but someone will find it and make it stanky. And we'll we'll have to see what happens there, but I don't think so. But all I know is March eighth, you got an amazing music video coming out, and or we can just cut that out, you know. Uh, th- 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 that requires editing. Um, no, I could do that, but no, but seriously, there is just so much happening with you. I get Mar- March eighth, your music video is coming out, and again April third, uh, PCW huge event coming up. So you're kicking off WrestleMania week, where we're gonna have PCW and March eighth. We have your music video coming out, and again. We speculated off the top of this. What the hell is going to happen at WrestleMania? Is it going to be The Rock versus Roman? Will it be Cody versus Roman? Will it be Cody versus The Rock on one night and then Cody versus Roman on another? A tag team match. Nobody knows, but all we can do is speculate and make crazy statements like I just did. So we'll have to find out what happens. But all I know is what's guaranteed in life is March 8th. Your music video is coming out. That with that was in guarantee here. All right? Guarantee. That is for sure. That is that is for sure a statement on April third having um PGW and the you know, week into WrestleMania and my music video that is Queen that's about loving and empowering yourself. Racing the skin that you're in. Yes, Mercy Queen. Oh man, I can't wait. And again, so much is happening. This is probably the like, eighth time I think I've interviewed you, so we're gonna keep on going. No one's ever gonna be you. Unless someone just sits down with me and does like 10 in a row, one by one by one. But you have the record so far, the most interviews ever. Eighth, Gunther, I think is at sixth. So he's he might be catching up. He might be catching up to you. We'll have to wait and see about that. But again, I'm so excited for what you have coming up. Thank you for being here again on 10 Count. It's a pleasure as always. Hopefully everyone enjoyed our show. Hopefully no one twists our words. But we'll find out when this airs. I'm Steve Ball. 
She's Ariane Andrew. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.